Yo, what is going on guys? It's your boy Heroic here back with a how to faction series and now guys the first episode We're actually covering a minecraft faction bases and all of their defenses that they have So Now this is actually the first episode of the series and the reason that we're actually making this series is to go ahead and bring back More players into the community whether that be teaching absolutely new players or teaching very very old gen players All of the changes and how to go ahead and get caught back up with the factions community and everything within it so Like I mentioned the very first episode is going to be based on bases because that is practically the most important part is making a base and keeping your spawners and value in everything that you have saved. So that's what we're going to go ahead and talk about in today's episode. Now we're actually going to go ahead and go through all the basics and start off very, very simple. So first things first, when it comes to base, you have to go ahead and decide how big you want your base to be. Now this is what you call a shell. It's basically the size of your base. And obviously you guys can see I do have chunk borders on. You guys can see it is one, two, three, one, two, three. So there's three chunks by three chunks. Now if we go ahead and move over here to the left as well, it's two by two. So this decision has to go ahead and be made upon your faction. We're actually making your base layout and it also does have to follow these server rules the bigger the base the more room that you have the more value you can store but also the more base work that is required meanwhile if you do have a smaller base they can pretty much breach it twice and get all of your value so it is something definitely to consider but now in this first episode we are actually gonna go ahead and cover competitive faction bases as well as casual faction bases and all the different type of regens flat walls everything that you do need to know but firstly before we do go ahead and hop into all of the different defenses you guys need to go ahead and check out these server rules whatever server you're playing on, make sure that you guys go ahead and follow and correlate with their rules because I don't want you guys getting banned or striked, all right? But now first things first, obviously we just do have some straight walls. These are practically used just for patching. It's literally just obsidian walls with water over the top. It is the most simple base defense you can even get. Moving on, these are practically only used on a regen servers. We have got pillars and now the whole reason behind pillars. So these are actually used just like walls but with a little bit of a different twist. So the main reason for regens is to go ahead and make the base a lot harder to get into. And now the regens jobs to actually go ahead and make the people canning your base to go ahead and have to readjust multiple multiple times so now when somebody shoots at your flat walls and all this tnt does go ahead and break it will go ahead and make a much larger hole in the wall as you guys can see it went ahead and five whited and then it will also go ahead and nuke on down but now with pillars the thing you guys go ahead and see there is an air gap in between every single one of these walls so practically if they go ahead and start shooting here this will go ahead and get rid of this wall and now we'll go on to the very next one go ahead and get rid of that one but now say there is another region farther on behind in the base they will go ahead and have to readjust once again so then say they have to move over one to the right they have to go ahead and go through all of these walls once again now say they have to go back over two to the left they will have to go ahead and go through all of these whereas if you had flat walls like this they obviously could just shoot once and go ahead and get through all three of those all at once so that's pretty much why they are used on region servers now moving on to the very next one we literally just have an ocean now all of these blocks of water inside of here are actually source blocks of water now it's practically just used for patching so if we go ahead and start placing blocks you guys can see if you don't have an ocean all of this will actually turn into air down here below which makes it super annoying and actually toxic go ahead and patch because if you are swimming around going ahead and patching if you get into an air gap you obviously will go ahead and drop very very low which that time wasted if you drop maybe 10 five blocks even they probably can get two or three shots off. So if you have an ocean, this makes it a lot easier to go ahead and patch. Now, moving on to the last simple base defense, we do have finsters here. Now, finsters obviously are used with sand walls and some obsidian type filters. Now, the whole reason behind finsters is actually for anti nukes. So if somebody is shooting at 255, it'll obviously go ahead and get rid of the sand wall. But now, the reason why finsters are so good is somebody's actually shooting at a lower Y. So let's say they are shooting right here. So obviously, this will go ahead and nuke and break the obsidian, obviously, break a little bit of sand. But now, what that does is actually stop it from nuking all the way to the ground now fencers also known as anti nukes that is their whole purpose it's just to make it a lot harder to go through all of your sand walls because you have to shoot through them multiple times whereas if you didn't have them you could probably shoot through them one or twice at max and then be on to the very next one now guys moving into the very first set of regions we have got mine chats here and you guys can see they are all off centered by a single block and now the rest of these defenses are actually regions and i'm not going to show you guys how to make every single set of these regions in today's episode maybe in a later episode but the biggest thing if you guys do want to go ahead and copy this is first off off, make sure they are legal on the server you're playing and secondly to get the watering and lava right everywhere that you see lava is actually source blocks all the way down to the bottom like on the inside all of these need to be lava buckets as well and now with the water you guys can see it is flowing in a certain direction and that's for a reason and the water has to be flowing into the block so it does go ahead and start regening whereas if there is no current it will not flow into it and it will not go ahead and regen back but like i was saying mine chats they are one block off go ahead and make sure that they have to readjust multiple times and now with mine chats you need a minimum of three of these on your 
interface to make them most effective just to make sure that they constantly have to readjust now guys we're moving on to the very second one which is actually regen 45s which are actually banned on a lot of servers so definitely make sure with these ones now these 45s you can practically build them either way we've got the reverse and normal way and now everywhere that you see the lapis blocks that needs to be a water bucket source so you literally have to place buckets of water on every single one of these blocks around your entire defense now where you see the orange concrete that is just a singular lava bucket but the water that's very time consuming and takes quite a while but this is actually probably like the best defense you can have but very time consuming and it does go ahead and take up a lot of space as well now moving on to the very next one we have got horizontal filters now these are not seen too often but as you guys can see the water is flowing into the obsidian on the other side there is a lava source which these are kind of outdated not many people really use them anymore but still it could go ahead and throw some people off now moving on to the very next one we have an old set of the one by ones later on we'll go ahead and show you guys a brand new version of these but the same thing here the water is flowing into a certain block and then when it goes ahead and connects with the lava obviously it will go ahead and regen but this is also pretty outdated we have a better version coming up very soon now moving on to the very next one a highly underutilized base defense is actually the vertical filters which those are horizontal as you guys can see but these are vertical and now these are actually very time consuming to go ahead and set up as well because you have to make sure that the lava is right as well as the water and obviously you don't want to make a mess all the way down at the bottom so we put slabs around it you guys can see every other block is broken and then obviously it is on different y levels back and forth and i believe you need a minimum of two of these on your base to go ahead and actually make it effective as well now moving on over to pilters or hot dogs or whatever you guys want to call them you definitely want a couple of sets of these on your base if you do go ahead and decide to make these now these are actually very annoying because the best way to go ahead and get rid of them is actually back stacking and getting rid of the lava source so that way you can adjust back over and go ahead and nuke through them so it's very time consuming as well and takes a lot of shots but obviously all lava sources on the outside with water flowing into it now whenever one of these blocks go ahead and break obviously the water will go ahead and flow into it and go ahead and repair it once again now moving on we have got hearts that's what i call them we've got the water flowing into the back of the obsidian on every other block and obviously all lava sources in the front to go ahead and repair whenever it does get broken now these are actually pretty annoying to go ahead and deal with as well they make it so you have to go ahead and just a lot of times so they have to shoot here 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 and here just to go ahead and get a three wide hole so obviously if you go ahead and match these up with those pillars that i talked about earlier it takes a lot of readjusting and a lot of rebreaching now finally we've got the brand new one by ones that i did go ahead and talk about those are the older versions now these are the newer ones with water flowing into the back every other block and then all the front is lava bucket sources now guys these are practically all the different types of base defenses actually being used in today's factions and let me go ahead and make something very very clear right now so when i first started playing regens a very very long time ago i thought you could actually make an unraidable base so if you guys are new to regens there is literally no such thing as an unraidable base there is no unraidable base defenses now i will go ahead and say regen cannoning is a lot different than normal flat wall cannoning it takes a lot more skill now you may actually go ahead and get lucky that the person raiding you doesn't know how to get through the certain type of regions that you do have you know that is very unlikely you do have to be online and be able to go ahead and counter patch or stop the raid yourself but now guys if you have any more questions about any of these base defenses go ahead and comment them down below i will definitely be happy to help but now guys i'm actually going to go ahead and tp on over to my other home and show you guys how to check buffers and also check walls when you do go ahead and manage to get all of your base defenses up and you are ready for tnt to go ahead and enable all right so down below we do have our little fake mock base say this is at the end of your buffer and this is your base right here obviously we've got a two by two base right here and now at the end of your buffer you should definitely have a couple of sand walls because when you are checking walls you're practically just looking to see if the sand walls are actually down now when you are checking walls you want to go ahead and fly around your buffer and see if there is the sand wall that is down so obviously the sand was all the way up to 255 we don't got to worry about it but if you are flying around and you see something like this so say we're starting our wall check we're flying around we see oh my goodness there's a hole in our wall and you guys know that they are obviously starting to go ahead and raid and they're firing at your base and that's how you guys go ahead and alert the faction hop on start patching and you go ahead and defend your base now let us go ahead and talk about buffer checking because a lot of people don't actually know what a buffer check is so as you guys can see i'm currently looking at my east buffer you guys can tell because this is the east side and then over here we have got our north side buffer now practically what a buffer check is it's just simply flying out beyond our walls beyond our base and checking for any cannon boxes new claims or even people messing about that can go ahead and set up a cannon and attempt to go ahead and raid our base so now every faction is different if there is wild flight it is a lot easier to go ahead and check buffers so obviously you're just flying in one straight line and you just go ahead and turn your f map on search for any new claims that you don't recognize see if you find any new cannon boxes and if there is slash near on the server you can constantly spam that as well to see if there's any players nearby which is also super useful and like i said every faction is different go ahead and fly out maybe 5,000 blocks 2.5k blocks somewhere around there and obviously when you get back that is the east side buffer check completed now go ahead and go on to the north side and do literally the exact same thing and now if you're actually going up against a very talented faction it's super important to go ahead and catch them while they are still setting up so you can go ahead and 
ahead and get your buffer counters lined up. You can get a side counter printed in and ready to go. Because if it is a good faction, you may not have that time. So buffer checks severely underutilized by a lot of factions out there. But now guys, I think that is going to go ahead and do it for the first episode of How to Factions. I think the very next episode, we're actually going to go ahead and go over cannoning, like side countering, buffer countering, raid cannons, everything that you need to know and how to use a cannon so that you're prepared at all times. Now guys, if you guys do have any questions, make sure to go ahead and drop them down below in the comments. Hopefully I did go ahead and help out somebody in today's episode. And I will go ahead and see you guys all in the very next episode of How to Factions. Peace out.